<clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to talk about iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy. Uh, as per who WHO, World Health Organization, anemia is defined as hemoglobin less than 11 grams per deciliter. Anemia is one of the most important nutritional deficiencies impacting maternal health globally. Globally, 32 million pregnant women are affected by anemia, and 50% of them are iron deficient. Eight point eight percent of pregnant women in United States are anemic. Three point five percent has hemoglobin less than ten grams per deciliter, and the risk increases by gestational age. And by third trimester, thirty percent are iron deficient. Coming to physiology and definition, we all know that during pregnancy. Plasma volume goes up by 50% and also fetal and placental requirements go up and this leads to anemia and iron deficiency. Iron deficiency anemia is suspected by anemia with low MCV and it is confirmed by low iron. Mild anemia is defined as hemoglobin 10 to 11 grams per deciliter Moderate anemia defined as hemoglobin 8.5 to 10 and severe anemia is less than 8.5 grams per deciliter. Coming to fetal and neonatal effects, moderate or severe anemia is associated with preterm birth, low birth weight infants, higher prenatal mortality, and lower developmental scores in infants. Moderate to severe anemia increases the risk of postpartum hemorrhage threefold. Hemoglobin less than, greater than 10 at delivery minimizes the risk of blood transfusion. ACOG and CMQCC recommend that women with moderate anemia have an active type and cross match at delivery. This 30 to 120 milligrams of elemental iron is required for daily for pregnant women. Additional supplementation is necessary for women with anemia. When it comes to supplementation, the first line of treatment is oral iron. Various formulations of av are available. Ferrosulfate is the standard first line and many prenatal vitamins has 25 to 30 milligrams of elemental iron. However, oral iron is limited by intestinal absorption and side effects. Intravirus iron overcomes the limited intestinal absorption of oral formulations and may increase oral iron stores more quickly. Various IV formulations, IV iron formulations available are iron dextron is the older IV formulation. New IV formulations are iron sucrose, venifer, low molecular weight, iron dextron, ferric carboxy maltose, and ferrumoxitol. Iron sucrose is given as a multi-dose regimen. Ferric carboxy maltose, low molecular iron dextron, and or single dose regimens. Vigorous clinical trials of IV iron in pregnant women were performed outside United States. A Cochrane review in 2007 with an update in 2011 reached inconclusive results regarding use of IV iron in pregnancy. Hence, we performed a systematic review on meta of RCTs of oral iron versus IV iron in pregnancy. Our hypothesis was intravenous iron is superior to oral iron for treatment of iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy. Our study endpoints are 
achieving target hemoglobin of hemoglobin 11 or 12 in response to treatment, hemoglobin increase after four weeks of treatment, and subjects experiencing adverse effects. This meta-analysis was performed according to the statement, and it was registered with PROSPERO, which is an international registry for systematic reviews. We included all randomized control trials, open label or blinded, comparing intravenous iron with oral iron. We excluded studies comparing two different IV iron formulations. Various IV and PO used in the study are iron sucrose used in nine studies, ferric carboxymaltose in iron dextron in one, and the PO formulations are IV iron is administered, and the PO formulations are ferrosulfate six, ferrous fumarate three, ferrous ascorbate in one study, and iron polymaltose complex in one study. And the IV iron dose administered in the studies was calculated using the formula here. Target hemoglobin was 11 or 12 grams per deciliter. Iron sucrose, 200 milligrams given every other day in divided doses. Ferric carboxy maltose, 1000 milligrams was given once a week. Low molecular weight iron dextron was a one time infusion. Hemoglobin and adverse assessed after four weeks. We reviewed 280 studies for eligibility and after exclusion, 11 open label RCTs comparing IV iron to oral iron for iron deficiency pregnancy in anemia were included in our meta-analysis. This is a table here showing the study characteristics of RCTs included. <laughs> Seven studies were conducted in India all at different hospital locations, while other studies were completed in Turkey, France, and Egypt, with one multi-center international study, including seven countries. Most studies had 50 patients in each group, while the multi-center trial included 120 patients in each group. Inclusion criteria for all the studies was iron deficiency anemia, confirmed by low hemoglobin and low ferritin. Outcomes were different in each study. For some studies, <coughs> outcome was increase in hemoglobin and ferritin after four weeks, and some studies, it was number of patients reaching the target. The figure here shows the risk of bias in each studies, in the studies included. Green means bias, Hello means unclear and red means high risk of bias. The bar graph on the right shows the percentage of risk of bias in each category. All the studies included were all RCTs. So all the studies had high risk of bias in domains of blinding participants, personal and outcomes. Four studies described allocation concealment while allocation methodology was not described in seven studies. All other categories of bias were low risk among included studies. A total of 599 patients are included in IV iron group and 591 in iron group. Pre-treatment hemoglobin was similar between IV and oral iron groups, and 8.3. Post-treatment hemoglobin was significantly greater in IV iron with a P of 0.008. Pre-treatment ferritin was similar between IV and oral groups. Post-treatment ferritin was significantly greater in subjects receiving IV iron with a P of um, 0.01. This is a forest plot showing patients achieving target hemoglobin. Seven studies provided data on percentage of subjects achieving target hemoglobin, which is 11 or 12 for four weeks of treatment. The box here represents um, the size of the study. The 
diamond uh, on the bottom to the right represents the pool odds ratio. Women treat IV iron are 2.6 times more likely to reach target when compared to PO iron. This is the next bar splat uh, shows the mean difference in hemoglobin in IV versus PO groups. Nine studies provided data on the increase in hemoglobin concentration after four weeks of treatment. The mean difference in hemoglobin increase was 0.8 grams per deciliter higher in IV iron group when compared to PO iron group. This is another forest plot showing adverse events among women receiving IV versus oral iron. Women receiving IV iron had 3.3 times lower adverse effects when compared to PO iron. Pools odd ratio, the diamond here is on the left side, which shows lower rate of adverse events. We also performed a sensitivity and subgroup analysis with women starting hemoglobin less than eight versus greater than eight, and including only via studies and studies with iron sucrose only. Two forest plots showing main difference in hemoglobin with starting hemoglobin less than eight versus greater than eight. The increase in hemoglobin in response to IV iron was slightly higher among those with starting hemoglobin less than eight grams when compared to greater than eight, 0.9 versus 0.7. So summary of the results, Women receiving IV iron are 2.7 times more likely to achieve target hemoglobin within four weeks, which is target hemoglobin at 11 or 12. Increased hemoglobin levels are 0.8 grams higher after four weeks of treatment and 0.3 times lower of adverse effects. Our limitations are lack of blinded study maternal and neonatal outcomes were not studied and cost analysis was not performed. Then coming to clinical considerations, oral iron is the first line of treatment. Benefits of treatment of iron of anemia during pregnancy are well established. Women treated for anemia in pregnancy had higher hemoglobin levels lower rates of anemia and decreased low risk of birth weight neonates um, and higher infantile scores at nine months of age. Also, there was a linear dose response effect of iron up to 66 milligrams per day. Absolute birth weight increased and the low birth weight neonate decreased for every 10 milligrams increase in daily iron up to 66 milligrams per day. While oral iron is the first line of treatment, mild iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy, there are several limitations. Only 5 to 28% of oral iron is absorbed. Majority of the absorption happens in duodenum and jejunum. Oral iron has adverse effects, nausea, vomiting, epigastric discomfort, diarrhea, constipation. Also, Hepcidin is the negative regulator of oral iron absorption. This is a study showing absorption of oral iron and hepcidin. In a here, 60 milligrams of iron was given on day one at 10 a.m. and at 2 p.m. Then at day two, 8 a.m., another 60 milligrams of iron was given. And we can see the hepcidin levels go up significantly with each dose of iron. And the figure B to the right, the bioavailability of iron goes down significantly after first dose. So as the iron intake goes up, hepcidin goes up and the bioavailability goes down. So the bottom line is less is more, pure daily dosing of iron is sufficient and BID, TID dose is associated with adverse effects. 
So to overcome these limitations, to increase the bioavailability of oral iron, vitamin C is added to promote absorption. And to decrease the side effects associated with PO iron, mucoprotease is added for prolonged absorption. The bar graph here shows adverse effects with each individual iron formation. Ferrosulfate is associated with 32% of adverse effects and addition of mucoprotease to ferrosulfate brings it down to 4%. Here uh, shows the odds of adverse effects with each iron formulation to ferrosulfate and mucoprotease. All other formulations have significant higher, higher um, adverse effects. Indications of IV are listed here. Patients with bariatric surgery, inflammatory bowel disease, H. pylori infection, patients who failed oral iron, patients with bleeding disorders, thrombocytopenia, normal placentations, severe anemia, and patients presenting with anemia in third trimester. NETA, Network for the Advancement of Patient Blood Management, Homeostasis, and Psychosis, recommend IV iron for patients who failed to respond to oral iron in two to four weeks and patients with severe anemia, hemoglobin less than eight grams per deciliter, and new diagnosis after 34 weeks. So in conclusion, intravenous iron, when compared to oral iron, higher number of patients reach target, greater increase in hemoglobin, has fewer adverse effects, particularly useful in third trimester, and in patients who are refractory to oral iron and patients at higher risk of bottom hemorrhage, it may decrease the risk of blood transfusion. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Um, I would like to thank the entire MFM division at Cedar for their mentorship and their support. Everyone in the division had been extremely supportive um, to me during the past three years given my complex social situation. Um, and uh, I would like to thank Dr. Kilpatrick and Dr. Gregory for giving me the opportunity to be a fellow here. Um, this wasn't an easy route. It was hard being a foreign medical graduate. However, we know in our division in OBGYN, we all embrace diversity. So I was given the opportunity to be a fellow here and I'm grateful for that. And Dr. Gregory, thanks for uh, checking in with me all the time, professional. And thanks for all the great parenting advice. Um, I'm definitely going to miss that. And I'm going to reach out to you whenever some parenting advice. And thanks, Dr. Borwick. Thanks for being here. And thanks for being there all the time. Uh, three oral presentations and five papers I had with you. Thank you. Um, and my husband is jealous that I text you more than him. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Dr. Asakap and Dr. Williams for uh, all the ultrasound and the procedures. And thanks, Dr. Azimek and uh, Dr. Nakvi for being great faculty and being there all the time. And thanks to my all of my co-fellows. I could not have asked for a better group. Um, Melissa, Gabby, Sarah, thanks. Great, and thanks for uh, covering and helping me whenever I need it. Um, and then last but not Thanks to my parents and my in-laws. Uh, this fellowship would not be possible without them. They come from India, they swap every six months, they come all the way here and they babysit my kids. So without them, I would not, this would not have been possible. And uh, finally, thanks for my husband. Um, as much as he complains, um, he's also definitely supportive. Um, thank you and uh, I will take questions. Uh, this is Dr. Berwick. I'm here with Shravya, but I want to say excellent presentation and nice job. And can you? Yeah, you can hear me. Uh, and and uh, I just want to yeah say Shravya has been an amazing fellow and very proactive. And you know she did this her thesis work in her first year and actually started and completed it within one year. So it's super productive and oh, had never done a meta analysis and just had this idea to 
look at IV iron and really, uh, you know, is very proactive and, you know, really got it done. She's very thorough, very quick at moving projects forward and really did a great job presenting this at ACOG getting it published and now potentially is uh, maybe a part of a larger uh, collaborative with CMQCC to look at IV iron uh, more broadly. So really great job and just want to say congratulations. Thank you.